Another. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver. The Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? The Lone Ranger sat in the headquarters office of Colonel Hume at Fort Leeton. He listened with interest as the Colonel paced the floor in front of him and talked. My son Bert graduated from the academy at West Point recently. And I requested he be sent to this post. I see. Since his arrival here a month ago, Bert has acted strangely. Oh, in what way? He was unusually quiet, didn't mix with the others. And on his off time, he went riding away from the fort alone to be gone hours at a time. Is he still acting that way? Wait, please let me finish. Well, of course. Go on, sir. Before Bert came here, we captured one of Captain Kamar's men during a raid on one of our supply wagons. I've heard of that deserter, Captain Kalmar, and his renegade army. Kalmar and his men have been a thorn on our side, attacking ammunition wagons, stealing supplies and horses, and so on. Haven't your scouts been able to track any of his men to Kalmar's hideout? Yes, on two occasions. But by the time we assembled the troopers and went there, Kalmar and his men had moved to another stronghold, which we weren't able to locate promptly. He's moved from one stronghold to another in the foothills, and all our efforts to catch up with him have been in vain. So I've heard. But what of the man you captured? If you could get him to talk, I... The man we took prisoner was sentenced to be shot. Then we received orders from the commanding general at Fort Worth to stay the execution until further notice. Well, that's interesting. Yes, yeah, interesting and strange. But, of course, I never question orders from superiors. But uh, to get back to my son. Yes? From the time of his arrival, Bert showed unusual interest in the prisoner, who was a rough-looking man named Hal Carver. Bert insisted the man should get better treatment and better food. Perhaps Bert needs time to get used to the discipline of the army in the field, Colonel. Yes, that's the way I felt, that it would take time for the lad to toughen up. Anyway, one evening when he was duty officer for the night... Bert went to the guardhouse and spoke to the guard. Guard, I've had orders to question the prisoner. Unlock the door for me. Very well, Lieutenant. Now get inside and be quiet. Huh? I have a gun at your back. Well, I don't understand, Lieutenant. What do you... I said go inside. Yes, sir. 
All right, Carver, hurry. There's a cord in my pocket. Come tie him up. With pleasure, Lieutenant. When you finish with that, use your handkerchief to gag him. Look, what's this all about, Lieutenant? Holy mackerel, if you let this hombre escape, Shut you'll up. get... Hurry up, Carver. Yeah. There. No, I'll gag him. No, wait, I... will tell you. <coughs> He's all set, Lieutenant. Good. We'll leave him on the cot. I have horses waiting. We'll manage to get through the guard outside. You, guard, see that the colonel gets this sword. I've stuck a note on the handle. Now, let's get away from here fast, Carver. Come on. They went outside. And while Bert talked to the guard at the gate, Carver moved up behind in the darkness and... Knocked the guard out. Oh, this is hard to believe, Colonel. Yes, I know, I know. To think that my own son would do a thing like that. Uh, what about the note he left? Oh, yes. Here it is. Let me see. Dear Dad, I'm turning in my sword and leaving, taking Hal Carver with me. I didn't realize the Army treated human beings the way they treated this man. I want none of it. And Carver's convinced me that Captain Kalmar's cause is worth fighting for. Sorry, Dad, but that's the way it is, so goodbye, Bert. The boy must be mentally ill. That man Carver was a killer, a hard, vicious fellow who wouldn't give us any information under any conditions. He speaks of Captain Kalmar's cause. Kalmar, in my opinion, is insane. He has a mistaken idea that he can gather enough forces to establish a state of his own, from the Big Bend to the New Mexico border. So that's it. Yes. The danger is greater than headquarters thinks. Kelmore will continue to add renegades and gunmen to his force until most anything could happen. I, I can't understand Bert being persuaded. Frankly, that note wasn't too convincing to me. Are you sure there's no other reason why Bert would do something as drastic as that? No, the whole disgraceful thing has me stumped. When did he leave with Carver? Three days ago. Oh. I've had troopers searching for them, but without success. That's why I sent for you. Hunt and I'll do all we can to help you, Colonel. I knew you would. And by thunder, if you find Kalmar's stronghold, we'll take every last trooper at the fort and go after him. I'll not rest until he and Bert are brought in to get the punishment they both deserve. The Tonto's waiting outside. If we get any news, I'll let you know. And goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye, sir. In the shack he used for headquarters back in the foothills, Captain Kalmar, a tough man with intense piercing eyes, was talking to Bert Hume and Hal Carver. The talks we've had since you came here, Lieutenant, have convinced me you're sincere in wanting to be with us. Uh, Captain, the fact that he helped me escape and became a deserter proves he wants to join up with you. That's right. How do I know your father and you didn't plan it this way? Your own scouts have reported that the colonel gave orders to the searching parties to shoot me on sight. That ought to be proof enough for you. Uh, yes, that's true. All right, Lieutenant, we'll consider you one of us. I'm hoping you'll be able to give us some useful information. I do know of something that will be helpful. Yeah, what is it? Several wagons of guns and ammunition are to come to the fort tomorrow. They'll take a route through Smoke Valley instead of the regular and shorter route. Hey, Captain, that's real news. We could use those guns and ammunition. Yes, I know. I'll have some of our renegade scouts watch for the wagons. In another month, I hope to have twice as many men. And after that, nothing will stop us. After the Lone Ranger met Tonto outside the fort, the two men rode toward the foothills, hoping to find some lead to the stronghold of Captain Kalmar and his men. As they rode a trail that was bordered with large boulders, a shot rang out. Oh. Quick, ride behind that big boulder. Come on, Silver. Up, Scout. Hold it, hold Scout. Hold it, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy. Scott. Easy. Are you hurt? Oh, bullet gray shoulder. It's not bad. The shot came from over to the left. I'll see you. Indian right away, fast. Let him go for the moment. I'll attend to your shoulder, then we'll pick up his trail. He may be one of Kalmar's men. No. Oh, that was a close shave. Yet he may be the means of showing us the way to the stronghold. We still wonder about Colonel Sun. So do I. With the long and strict training he had at the academy, it doesn't seem possible he'd do what he did, give such flimsy reasons. <clears throat> there, that bandage will hold. Uh, you you have ID about Lieutenant Kimasabi? I think if we could question him, we'd get a different reason than he gave in that note. 
All right, let's mount and try to pick up that Indian's trail now. Steady, big fella. You got it, easy fella. Monsieur! Watch out! For some time, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the Indian's trail. Then they lost it in a stream which was bordered by banks of shale. Finally, they pulled to a halt. Oh, 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 fella. Big fella. Oh. The Indian was clever in covering his tracks, Tonto. Ah. Indian pony, not leave marks on shale rock like horse with iron shoes. Well, sun going down, Kimasabi. Soon it'd be dark. We'll find a campsite, Tonto. There's a small town not far from here where we'll be able to get a few supplies. Ah. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. After selecting a campsite, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the edge of the nearby town. The masked man waited in a grove while Tonto went to the store. A burly-looking man stood at the counter buying tobacco. Tonto waited while the man talked to the storekeeper. That sure was surprising news about the colonel's son over to Fort Willen. What news is that, mister? Why, well, he helped a prisoner escape and went along with him as a deserter. You don't say. When did that happen? A few days ago. Left a note saying he was going to join up with Captain Kelmar. Huh. Colonel's son must be a fool, then. Why do you say that? Huh. You don't think any hombre in his right mind would throw in with Kelmar and his bunch of cutthroats, do you? Maybe not. But Kelmar's getting stronger every day, they say. He's liable to be running this part of the country someday. Tommy Rot, he'll hang as a traitor. If the colonel's son has gone with him, I reckon he'll hang, too. Well, that'd be 25 cents, mister. There you are. I wouldn't talk too much against Captain Kelmore if I was you. Someday we might both be living under his laws. So long. <laughs> Something for you, Indian? Ah, ah, here, Liz. Good. It'll only take a minute or two. After getting the supplies, Toto returned to the grove on the edge of town and told the Lone Ranger about the conversation in the store. The Lone Ranger remarked, I didn't see anyone right out of town, Toto. A fella go from store to cafe cross street. I see. That will give us a chance to follow him when he leaves. Oh. Why we follow, fella? Before I left the colonel, he told me no one outside the fort knew about the escaped prisoner and his son. Oh, I mean not know that. The only ones who'd know besides the troopers would be Calamar and his men. You think fella in store one of Calamar's men? Yes, Knowing what he does, and from what he said, I feel sure he is. We'll wait in the shadows near the cafe until he leaves. Then we'll follow him. Later, when the man whose name was Sam left the cafe and rode from town, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed at a safe distance. The moon had come up, and the moonlight helped them keep the man in sight. The outlaw rode trails that twisted and turned through the foothills, and at times he rode in shallow streams. It took all their ingenuity for the masked man and Indian to keep on his trail. They rode for some time. Then they saw the man ahead ride into the shadows of a narrow pass. They pulled to a halt. That pass seems to go into a canyon beyond. Ah. That's the entrance to the present stronghold. They'll have guards watching. That's right. We'll circle well around to the wooded area, then ride up the side of the hill and try to reach the rim of the canyon. All right, let's get going. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. The Lone Ranger and Tonto stopped near the top of the ridge, then crawled forward cautiously. A moment later, they reached the rim of a hidden canyon and looked down. That's it, Tonto. Kalmar's stronghold. Ah, uh, we see plenty horses. Get plenty big camp. We'll get word to Colonel Hume right away. Freeze, both of you. I got you covered. Now stand up. One move and I'll blast All right. you. Get up, Tonto. Uh -huh. Now keep your hands up and turn around. You're giving the orders? Well, mask armory and an engine, eh? I reckon this is the last time you'll do any spying for the Colonel. We'll send you both back to the fort filled with lead. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, 
Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto looked over the rim of the canyon, the man Sam, whom they had followed from town, came up behind them and got the drop on them. The masked man and Indian stood facing the hard-faced gunman. You're more clever than I thought. Yeah, I got wise that I was being followed, mister. I waited just inside the pass in the shadows and saw you turn aside. I figured what you were up to, so I came up here and waited. I see. Mister, you and the others who follow Kalmar... Working for a lost cause. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we know better. We'll grab the wagons of guns and ammunition that's going to pass through Smoke Valley at dawn. After that, we'll be stronger than ever. I suppose Bert Hume gave you that information. Yep, he sure did. But enough of this yapping. I want to get this over with. <laughs> Seems like your horse is coming to kiss you goodbye. The great horse, Silver, sensed the danger to his master when he saw the gun in Sam's hand. The intelligent stallion walked slowly to them, coming in from one side as if to nuzzle the masked man. But just as he came close, the Lone Ranger whistled and Silver suddenly sprang forward with a snort of rage. The big stallion sent the gunman sprawling to the ground as the gun fell to one side. The Lone Ranger immediately leaped on top of Sam, knocking him breathless with a knee and clapping a hand over the gunman's mouth. I have to keep you quiet. He hasn't covered. All right, you get up. If you make one sound, I'll take horse. You tricked me. Keep him covered, Toto. I'll tie and gag him, and you can take him to the fort. Ah, uh, and what you do? I'll go warn the wagon train. Tell the colonel they plan to attack the wagons in Smoke Valley at dawn. Uh -huh. It'll be easier for the troopers to take Kalmar and his men in that valley and to try to get into their stronghold. Uh, that right. There. We'll put him on scout with you and take him to the fort. I'll ride now to meet the wagons and see you at Smoke Valley at dawn. <laughs> Later at the fort, after delivering Sam to the troopers, Toto listened as the colonel spoke. Tonto, if there are wagons bringing guns and ammunition, I don't know anything about them. But Sam feller say that. It's what Kalmar and men think. I don't understand it. However, we'll take the troopers to Smoke Valley so as to be there at dawn in case Kalmar and his thugs do show up. Lone Ranger, meet us there. Him go warn wagons. If Bert told Kalmar that, I don't know how he got his information. I'm not expecting any wagons. Maybe it's some trick the fellow pulled, so you'd tell me, and then you'd... When feller Sam tell us about wagons, him think we're going to die. Him stand with gun ready to shoot. Yes. Then Kalmar must believe it, even if we know it isn't true. In that case, he'll take his men to that valley anyway. Ah. With Sam prisoner now at fort, him not able to warn Kalmar. The troopers will be there ready to close in on them. I'll give the necessary orders. Before dawn, Captain Kalmar stood in front of his shack in the canyon and looked over the long, ragged lines of followers who were waiting to mount. Well, men, we're ready to go. We'll divide when we reach the valley. Half will be under my command on one side, the rest under Hal Carver on the other side. Wait until the wagons move into the valley. I'll give the signal to attack. Two shots. Then move in on them. How much of an escort do you think they'll have, Lieutenant? I don't know, Captain. Well, they usually have four men to a wagon, two in a seat, and two on horseback. I understand there are six wagons. Well, yeah, that means about 24 men. Well, we'll take them by surprise and by numbers. We now have 50. That's right. All right, mount. Let's get moving. Ready there. Get it back. Get it back.
The troopers from the fort also moved toward the valley. Toto, who had gone ahead to do some scouting, returned to report to the colonel. Easy scout, easy fella. It's it not good we ride straight through valley. Yeah. Men waiting in ambush in trees partway down slopes on each side of valley, ready to attack wagons. And I'll divide our forces and move my troopers behind Kalmar's men just on the opposite ridges. Ah. When the time comes, the troopers will ride down the slopes, forcing Kalmar's men into the valley so they're between our crossfire. The troopers will move in on the ridges quietly and stay out of sight until the time comes for action. Oh, that's a good idea. Our scouts will inform us if the renegades are there. Then if the wagons don't come at dawn, we'll move on Kalmar's men anyway. And I... Well, I almost hope my... Lieutenant Hume will not be taken alive. Just before dawn, Kalmar's men were waiting in hiding on the slopes of either side of the valley. Unknown to them, the troopers had moved in quietly on the ridges behind them. As the first rays of the sun came over the horizon, Kalmar, who was sitting on his horse beside Bert Hume, spoke. We'll do big things together, Lieutenant. Of course, if your tip about the wagons is full... The wagons will come, Captain. I'm sure of Good. It. Those guns mean a lot to us. Before long, people will hear a great deal about Captain Kalmar. Yes, indeed, sir. When I rule this section of the country, Lieutenant, I'll see that you, too, have wealth and some power. And with our military training, we'll gradually build a strong army. Every man has his dreams, Captain. But few achieve them. Captain, the wagons have been sighted. They're just about to enter the valley. Good. Yeah, good. This is it, Lieutenant. You've really proved yourself this time. Thank you, sir. In a short time, we'll be moving down to take those wagons. The men have had orders not to let any of the troopers get away. Your father, the colonel, is due for some shocking news before the morning is over. Just over each ridge behind the renegades and gunmen, the troopers from the fort also heard the news about the wagons approaching. Colonel Hume spoke to Tonto in puzzlement. Tonto, wagons are coming, eh? I don't understand it. Uh, soon them be in valley, and Kalmar's men attack. Yeah, we'd be right behind them. I, I don't want to think about, about the lieutenant. I, I hope I don't see him during the battle. Uh, me, me no. As soon as they start the attack, the bugler will give the troopers their signal. Then we'll go into action. A short time later, the six wagons were centered in the valley, moving along slowly. Kalmar watched tensely. Well, there they are, Lieutenant. Time has come for me to get the signal. The bugle. Look, coming over the ridge over there behind our man, troopers. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's right. And there are more behind us, Captain. It's a trap. Look at the wagons. Captain Kalmar looked down at the wagons. From each of them, many troopers were jumping hastily and turning their fire on the renegades. I thunder, you've tricked us. Who's going to hold the you not shoot, Lieutenant. He planned all this. Uh, we know that now. Quickly, Toto tied his lariat around Captain Kalmar, who had been wounded in the gun arm. Then leaving him on the ground like a rope calf, he and Bert went down the slope to get into the fray. Get him up, Scott! Get up, boy! In the valley, the lone ranger who had arrived with the wagons was in the thick of the battle. He was determined that all of Kalmar's men be taken, and his flaming gun saved many a trooper from the bullets of the renegade army. Hal Carver, who had led the other half of Kalmar's men, decided to get away and started down the valley. Get up there. Get going there. Hal turned in the saddle and saw the masked man on the big white stallion following him. In a frenzy of fear, he emptied his gun at the oncoming figure. His galloping horse spoiled his aim, and he turned his attention to outrunning the masked man. But the gallant silver steadily moved closer, until with a whirring sound, a lariat dropped suddenly over Carver and tightened. Oh, 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 oh. Back to the easy big fella. You're not going anywhere. Now get up. I'll take you back with the others. The battle is over. Captain Kalmar is finished. Come on, let's go. A short time later, as the troopers moved off with the prisoners carrying the wounded in wagons, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were with the colonel and a small group. The colonel was saying, well, I, I still don't know how this all happened. Perhaps it's better if the major who came with the wagon from Fort Stockton explains, Colonel. With pleasure. 
You see, Colonel, this was all arranged between the general at Fort Worth and your son, Lieutenant Hume. Arranged? That's right. The general saw your son when he passed through Fort Worth. They discussed Captain Kalmar's renegade army and its bad effect in this territory. Lieutenant Hume suggested he try to get in with Kalmar some way. Oh, Bert, come here. Yes, sir. You tell the colonel the rest. Well, Dad, uh, sir, we agreed it was best not to let you in on it. You might object to something. The general sent a stay of execution for Carver, hoping I'd be able to get in with him. I understand, Lieutenant, that sending the wagons filled with troopers from Fort Stockton was also your idea. That's right. As soon as I succeeded in getting away with Carver, I managed to get word to the Major. I sent one of our scouts who was in on the plan. Well, you all know the rest. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Your son has plenty of courage, Colonel. It took great courage to do what he did. And I... I gave orders for the men to shoot him on sight. <laughs> That's all right, sir. I, I just kept out of their way. And to think I... I thought you weren't fit to be a soldier. Forgive me, son. You'll go far in the service. Thanks, sir. Now that things are under control, Tonto and I'll be getting along, Colonel. Thanks for your help, sir. Because of you and Tonto, we were able to fight and capture all those renegades and cutthroats. Yes, I'm afraid we'd have had a hard time of it without the troopers from Fort Leeton, Colonel. I didn't know Kalmar had so many men. And Kalmar would have shot me if it hadn't been for Tonto. What's more, I saw the masked man capture Hal Carver. He almost got away. The main thing is, Kalmar's renegade army is finished. Men like that don't deserve to live in America. If we're to stay free, we must always be on guard against traitors. As long as we have courageous Americans like you, sir. And, if you'll pardon my saying so, like my son, our freedom is well guarded. Thank you, Colonel. We'll see you again sometime. Adios, everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Dad, uh, Colonel, sir... Since I'm new to the West, may I ask who that masked man is? Of course, son, of course. To me, son, he represents the true spirit of America. A man who fights against all odds, without reward or glory, to uphold the traditions of our great country and to protect the rights and freedom of its people. Such an American is the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.